Okay. Um, so I will uh, go ahead and open the meeting of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, sitting on the board and voting this evening on matters before us will be myself, David Bloomberg, um, Sarah Northrup, and Elizabeth Silver. So providing staff support to the board is Carolyn Mish from the Office of Planning and Sustainability. Um, we have three items on the agenda this evening. Um, but first, we will, I'll ask if there appears to be anyone here who would like to address public comment, meaning comments to the board that do not relate to any of the items on the agenda, just general comments. Um, Carolyn, do we see anyone? I don't uh, see any hands raised or stars okay. or anything like that. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, do we have the information, Carolyn, about when notice of this meeting was published? Yeah, so the first item was published back in January, the continuation for the finding um, at MAP ID 41-6. The okay. other items were published um, um, oh, in March, um, in March 10th and March 17th. Okay. In uh, the Gazette. Okay, thank you. And um, seeing that there is nobody raising their hand to for public comment on matters unrelated to the agenda items, um, we will start with the request for a commercial finding for a change from one non-conforming trade use to another by Rock Valley Heating and Air Conditioning Inc. at one main road, what West Hampton, map ID 41-6. Um, and I understand, Carolyn, there's a re another request for a continuance for that matter to uh, another date. Correct. Yes, the parties, I guess, are working out um, an arrangement um, and they can't, they haven't quite finalized it, but they, the one of the attorneys representing one of the parties does is not convinced that it will be finished by the April 14th meeting. So I guess I would recommend April 28th just to kick it far enough down so that they have another month to finalize that. And um, from what I understand, that means that um, they're if they do settle, then they'll withdraw the application. Um, okay. But at this time, they haven't, they're not ready to, you know, make any statement one way or the other. So okay. do you need a motion for a continuance? Yes. Okay, so moved. Second. And um, do you want to put that at 530? Is that going to be part of your motion uh, first up on the agenda? Uh, we can, unless you want to wait to see um, whether, I mean, we can. I, don't, I, think I, I think that might simple. work because. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So at five thirty to twenty eighth, and is yeah. there anyone here on either uh, and anyone else here who can confirm if the twenty eighth at five thirty works, or if there's no one here, we'll assume it will and plan accordingly. Sure. The the um. Uh, the attorney said two meetings. Okay, um, all right. And so that's, that's good what enough. I was working on. Okay, okay. So we have a, a, a motion and a second. I guess we need a roll call vote on uh, since we're virtual. Okay, uh, Sarah Northup? Yes. Uh, Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes. So that that is continued till 5.30 on April 28th. Um, so we have two other items. One of them also scheduled for 5.30, so we can go ahead to that. Uh, before we start that one, though, I will ask that anyone, that the way we'll do this is we will first invite the applicant or the representative of the applicant to present a brief uh, summary of the application, copies of which we have, uh, to the board. Then the board will have an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant or the representative. And then after that, if there's any 
member of the public who would like to address that specific application, they will have a chance to do so. I ask that all questions be addressed to the board, not to the applicant. And, um, and that everyone who speaks first, identify your name and address for the record that Carolyn is keeping. Um, after we uh, hear the application and all comments and all discussion, um, the board may move to close the public hearing. After that, we can have no more input from the public or the applicant. And after that, the board may move uh, to make a, a decision on the application. So with that as a preface, uh, we will now hear the application for a finding to modify pre-existing non-conforming side and rear setback by uh, David. Yes. Let me just disclose quickly that I yes, know- Yes, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I know the applicants, um, we've mm -hmm. worked together tangentially on some political work, it won't affect my ability to be fair and impartial in this matter. Okay. Um, I, I guess when we hear from the applicant, we'll ask if, um, if there's any objection to uh, Elizabeth's hearing this. And, and I suppose we should ask if anyone else present in connection with this application has any objections Does that seem appropriate. Um, uh, is anyone raising their hand? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, so now we'll hear from the applicant or the applicant's representative on this request for a finding at 23 Hooker Avenue, Northampton. And if you could start by uh, introducing yourself and Carolyn will invite you in or however that works. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you. Um, my name is uh, Chris Lee. I'm head of design and development at Backyard ADUs, a, a local company that's focused on building small homes and small lot zoning. Um, and we're representing the Novits on uh, building, on replacing the existing structure at 23 Hooker uh, with two new small homes under Northampton's new two family by right zoning. Um, this evening, what we're looking to do is just prevent, present uh, very preliminary uh, sketches of what we intend to do, uh, an initial existing condition survey, um, in order to set public record that we have put an application to replace this structure before it's been removed from the property. Uh, when the Novits bought the property um, late last year, uh, an oil spill was found in their due diligence. Uh, and that created an urgency uh, to remediate the problem and remove a portion of the building. Um, and they're working closely with the mass DEP to do that. Um, so we don't have time to com fully complete our plans and request a finding from you before that building might be torn down. Um, so tonight we're looking to get the initial plans in front of you. And then uh, we'll be looking to request a continuation until a future date to come back with a complete plan set and request uh, a vote. Um, but I can share my screen and give you a quick idea of, of what it is we were working on. Um, so in the packet that we shared, uh, there, were, uh, there were three items. There was an existing conditions and boundary survey done by Dan Sauls, uh, the surveyor that we, we work on all of our projects. And he went out, identified property lines, and identified exactly where um, the existing building is. Um, we, we've got lots of photos of this showing how big it is and how imposing it is on the, the surroundings. Um, and he also uh, noted exactly what the setbacks are. So this building as it stands right now is non-conforming on the, on the eastern setback and on the northern setback nearest the park. Um, as you can see in, in, in the 10, 10 uh, it's not an angle to the rear, but 10 foot on one corner and going up to 12.9 on here, and then virtually sitting on the proper land on the east. Um, and we did include in our narrative a table um, that kind of pulls these pieces out. So it's very clear as to what the current situation is. Um, as you can see, all of these are pretty much um, the only thing that is in line with uh, the zoning rules is the is the height. 
um, in terms of the existing use, so it is currently being used as a uh, car maintenance facility and, and storage. In the past, it's had other industrial uses. It used to be an old dairy. Um, when we we're, we're proposing to change it back to residential, which is more in the character of the neighborhood. Um, and it's understanding that a lot of neighbors are very pleased with this, with this development. So if we zoom in here, we have an initial site sketch of just a concept map of what we're, of what we are proposing to do at this point. Again, this is just preliminary. So you can see this is uh, the black and blue lines are the old footprint of this structure. Uh, we, are, we are intending to maintain the setback on the east, um, but significantly reduce the length and how much is in that, how much of the building is in that setback. And on this face, it's also gonna be a lot shorter. So it's going to be a, a much smaller massing on the eastern property line. Um, we're also proposing, we're gonna bring it a little bit further away from the park as well in order to make this a little bit closer to conforming. We're still not gonna be all the way where we need to be for the required setback, um, but we're gonna make it better than it is. Um, and this portion of the building is gonna be similar in height to, uh, to the existing structure. Um, so this is the larger house. This house is gonna be used by the Novitz aging parents. They're gonna use this to age in place. And then they're also gonna add a smaller, a smaller dwelling unit uh, to make the most out of this parcel and create either a space for a caregiver or uh, a rental unit that can be added to Northampton's housing stock. Um, and as of right now, it's also the intention to try to make this fully net zero with solar. Um, this is a concept drawing of what we're, of what we're thinking about doing for the house in the back. Uh, we are thinking about having this be modern styling um, and this would be the face that is in the more non-conforming uh, portion of the building on that eastern property line. And again, this is just a, this is just a preliminary concept. Uh, we expect this to go through many more iterations, but we will be presenting uh, final plans and elevations to you when we come back probably next month or, or the month after that. Uh, can I just interrupt? I, I'm a little, I just have a question procedurally. If you need to remove the house, the current structure, I should say, in order to carry out the required DP cleanup by the deadline and then come back to us with a full set of plans and a detailed proposal. What is the purpose of tonight's presentation? Why can't we just clarify? Do yeah, can I clarify a couple sure. of things or, yeah. or answer yeah. that, I guess? Um, I think, so first of all, your review is about the setbacks, the side and the rear setbacks and approving something. You don't necessarily need full detailed plans. That will be up to you, whether you feel comfortable with what you see. The applicant doesn't need to come back for, the property owner does not need to come back for approval of the resident, of the use. The residential structures because that's allowed by right. Um, if you're building more than one principal structure on a property in this district, um, it requires a planning board permit. So the planning board ultimately would approve the final layout in a site plan review. Um, so really the zoning board's jurisdiction is just um, A, confirming the non-conforming boundaries and B, um, evaluating whether the proposed change in the nonconformity is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing nonconforming setback. So you would look at the massing of the existing building and how close it is to the property line as compared to what's being proposed in terms of footprint. And also I would say height because, you know, this is a large structure now. So you look at the changes um, and you could even look at, you know, sometimes the impacts of amassing are greater or lesser depending on how the side of that facade is treated. Um, so those are the things that I would recommend that are, you know, narrowly your jurisdiction to evaluate. 
And then you can determine whether or not you feel like there's enough detail and understanding of the presentation of how the structure, the new structure will be different from the old structure and whether or not it's substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the than So, so in, in other words, the reason we're hearing this so-called preliminary presentation is in case at the end of this presentation this evening, we are comfortable making a decision right now on the request for the finding with the available information and the preliminary presentation. Uh, and if we're not, we have the option of continuing, but okay, I, I, guess I, I guess I understand now and why we're not just waiting till there's a complete set of plans because we don't necessarily have to have a complete set of plans if, if we're comfortable making the decision with the preliminary plans. Right. Is that what we're saying? That's right. Are okay. we, are we um, constraining the appellants then to a certain, just to certain setbacks in the non-conforming if we approve tonight? And are we limiting them? So, you know, at, at some points, as we see it, the north part is actually creating a larger um, setback than there had been. Are we constraining them so that if they want to go back to where it is now, so that it's actually the same rather than less, they're not going to be able to do that? Um, they would have to come sense. back for an amendment if it's different. So what you would be approving, and the applicant understands this, and I think the it's my understanding, let the applicant speak to this, um, but it's my understanding that they want <clears throat> approval of the setbacks. And so they're representing, I think it was um, on the plan before, that they would um, show a 14-foot rear setback as opposed to 10.35 and then one foot on the on the west east, east side um and so yes then that would be the extent to which they could place their new structure um the applicant is aware of that i think the modifications are going to be as they get closer to um, more detailed construction drawings, like what precisely are the windows? What's the siding going to be? What's the overhang? You know, what are the other facade elements that they just don't have yet? It also may, they may want to elongate the structure along the rear or the side and make it a little bit longer um, than what's shown on the plans. So you all can certainly say, we're comfortable with that so long as you don't get closer than what you're showing or we'd like to see an amendment if you make it more than 50% longer than what you're showing or something like that. You know, you, you can be, you can determine that. Um, we say, I, or longer than what currently exists, even though there's an intention to shorten it, uh, to lengthen the setback. And I, I guess, can I, you go ahead, please. Um, I just, I, we, we, don't, we don't want approval tonight. We, we're not ready. Um, part of the reason we came here tonight was um, in the bylaw, there is it's it's written that the you can replace an existing non-conforming structure, and we were worried that coming to you without an existing structure to replace may create a weird, a weird position where we're asking to do something that, as a technical stance, we couldn't. So what we're trying to do is we're, we want to start this process. So we're we're putting an application in front of you because we're there is an existing building there. Um, but tonight we don't we don't want to memorialize the plans that we have. Um, then why don't we just continue it now? That now I understand because well, I, mean, I keep thinking why are we doing something in two parts that we could just wait on and do in one part? You you've now answered that question. Yeah. Unless so why it don't makes we... unless it makes sense for planning board to have our imprimatur before you go there. I don't know if it does or not. I don't think but, they would be going he there does, for a while. Looking. Okay. They're not looking for an approval from us. Okay, that's fine. They're, they're not, they're not so even looking that, for a decision. Yeah, so I think, yeah, I mean, I, I just want to make sure there's clear understanding on behalf of the clients, uh, the applicant's representative, because you do have the jurisdiction to approve the setback 
limits on what's drawn and maybe the building or the structure will change and maybe you don't care about that. But otherwise, I mean, you know, the, the thing is if they do remove it without an approval, there's no more um, non-conforming structure. It's gone. So you're saying, so, Carolyn, they need an approval before that structure is gone? Yes. Okay, so I could, I could clarify my statement. Um, we would be happy to get an approval that these existing stepbacks of the existing constructors we can, we can build against. We do not want an approval of our proposed plans at this time. They're too preliminary. We may, um, we may not do 14 feet and this building may be longer as Carolyn said. So if, 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 if you'd like to go to a vote to approve, um, the existing setbacks on the existing building is what we would like to have put in the record as what we could continue to use. And then our determination standard, correct me if I'm wrong, Carolyn, is whether having these two structures is less detrimental to the neighborhood, substantially less detrimental, right? Or um, is not substantially more detrimental. More detrimental, yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yes, that would be the standard. I would also, um, I don't know if on this sheet, I didn't look at it. Um, I think the other caveat you'd want to say is if you're approving the non, I think you would be um, approving the non-conforming setbacks. And, uh, and saying, yes, we understand this and we know that you're gonna come back for plans. But the problem with that is, um, you know, um, there may be some other non-conforming issues on the property. So you wanna make sure you're not um, essentially allowing those to continue because they haven't asked for those. But um, I, think that I'm just sort of thinking through this to make sure that um, how you could do it. I mean, you're, you're at the, the whole evaluation is, so I guess then you could be accepting the setback and understanding that they're going to be coming back without guaranteeing that they would necessarily get approval for whatever they're showing in the, you know, forthcoming new application. Um, not that you wouldn't, but I'm just saying, you know, if they wanted to replace this box with the same size and height and massing and everything, that's a different calculation than the type of project they presented. Hey, this is a this is a case of first impression where we're being asked to make a, 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 a render a decision with an approval only because the current non-conforming building is going to be removed before the applicant is going to have final plans and final dimensions. So we... even if we approve this at the current non-conforming setbacks, that overrides the demolition of the building and the fact that at that time there won't be any non-conforming Well, that's where I think it's tricky. I think the better way to do this is to say, to look at the plans, approve the plans with the dimensions presented and sort of the general layout. And if there are substantially different setbacks or modifications, they can come back for an amendment before they start construction. But in this way, you've approved, you know, something in the place of a building and if they have tweaks or if they have substantial changes, then that's when they come back for an amendment and say, hey, you approved this and here were the setbacks, but we wanna change this in this way. And then it's a second, it is a different decision. Can oh. we approve the plans, but with different setbacks with the current setbacks rather than the reduced or increased setbacks that the plan has just to give them that leeway because as Mr. Lee was saying they're not looking for exactly the 14 feet in the rear you know so to give them the non-conforming the current non-conforming and maximize the possible use 
how, how could we do that? I mean, you could, you could say we would allow up to, you know, a 10 foot uh, rear setback or something like that. And that would take care of the concerns that you have about the procedural issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the, 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 go ahead, sir. Um, uh, the first question is, um, I believe there's some time frame in the uh, in the code about how long a time span between when you take down a building and don't replace it before you lose its existence. Isn't it two, two years, maybe? No. No, that's different. It's it's only it's related. To, I mean, it's an interpretation of abandonment. So. Um, so you can't, I mean, you're actively removing something. So that means you're done. Um, if it were an active, right. Um, right. you know, yeah. if it were a tornado that came in, then that would be different. Right, I see. The, um, the other, I'm thinking of this as being somewhat analogous to uh, someone coming before uh, CONSCOM for uh, an RDA saying, is this, um, applicable, are these conditions, you know, do I have wetlands to deal with here? Um, and so it's, it's sort of a predetermination of ap applicability um, on the setbacks. So acknowledging that there are these existing setbacks, um, we can, I suppose we can prescribe a building envelope um, and then they can work within that. Right, but it's kind of hard to evaluate a prescribed building envelope when we have no plans in front of us showing a, a structure with those dimensions. But I think the applicant might have had a comment. Did I see something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he writes in chat, can we say that the, that the building can be up to 20 feet longer in either dimension and up to the height allowed by zoning? Either dimension? Yes, that's what he is asking. I'm going to go closer to, right. It's only to the west that it could get longer. Right. To the north, we don't have 20 feet. I have a little concern about trying to visualize uh, some setbacks with no drawings or anything in front of us depicting those and saying that will not be substantially more detrimental. That seems a little um, tenuous to me. Um, Is it though, I mean, given the change in the nature of the use, um, well, is it, is it, are we looking more at the nonconformity that is changing or are we looking at the change in the use? You mean because the current building already is so close and current building is so close and the change in the nature of the use is going like to be. Yeah. I think we can rule on the change of use question. Well, I um, think they need more than that, don't they? No, they don't need a ruling on the change of use because it's an allowed use. So you're right, just bringing, use I think the evaluation though, I think maybe what you're asking um, is um, whether or not that can be part of the equation of substantially, not substantially more detrimental being that close because it's no longer a non-conforming use. It's a conforming use, but it's still on the property line and the massing is, is a residential scale massing instead of an industrial scale massing. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that could be okay, but you're not evaluate, you're not, you, there's no review of a change to a conforming use. Right, because it's allowed as of right. But so, um, okay, may, maybe we should go. I'm very curious to hear fr from any neighbors if there are any here to speak. But first, I suppose we should go back to the applicant. We, I, I, I apologize, Mr. Lee, I cut you off with all of this. I was just confused. Why are we doing something in two parts instead of one part? But I understand that now. So should we go back to Mr. Lee to finish his presentation? Is everybody okay with that? Okay. Sure. Um, I, I mostly I was pretty much wrapped up when you when you started. Okay. Um, I think I would just raise the the last point again. I it it seems it seems to me that if we and Caroline, I think if 
I don't, I may be misunderstanding, but if we can leave the hearing open with a continuation, we've acknowledged that these setbacks exist. And then if we come back next month or the month after to a hearing that already started, um, it, it shouldn't matter if the building is there. Uh, is that the incorrect? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that that would necessarily be the correct interpretation. Okay. I, I, it's not clear at all that that would be because the board hasn't made any determination you're taking the building down. So that's the reason Carolyn's approach is she's suggesting we do render a decision and if you had to come back for a modification, you could apply to modify for, for an amendment basically. And then the neighbors, Frank, as, a, as an aside, would have a chance to react to that as well. But okay, um, so the flexibility that we're really looking for in the in the the plan as we have it drawn um, is to extend the building this way closer to the uh, western setback and maintain um, an overlap into the rear. So this is the flexibility that we'd like to have in the decision that you render is to come this way. I don't know if I can mark up. Um, we, we can see what you're referring to. So this is the flexibility that we'd like is we may, ex we may create a longer building facing the park um, and don't anticipate it getting longer on this setback. So if that could if that could clear up what is what the language looks like for an approval, right, we'd be we'd be content with that. Um, I would, uh, I guess, I, I'm curious to hear from any neighbors. But first, I'll ask the board members if they have any more questions for Mr. Lee. I don't at this time. I don't either. I think you're you're the materials you prepared in the preparation is, is really quite excellent. So no, I don't have any questions. Okay. Uh, so I'll ask if anybody wants to, if there's anyone else attending who would like to address this application by, or comment on this application. Carolyn, do you see anybody? Uh, Carol. Um, I've just unmuted like... myself. Is that okay? Yeah, we hear you now. Okay. I very enthusiastically support this project. Um, I own the property abutting on the east at 21 Hooker. My name is Dr. Carol Glaskin, and I am thrilled not only for the elimination of the eyesore, which almost prevented me from purchasing the property I, I do now own. But um, I think Adam and Priscilla Novit have already demonstrated a environmental conscientiousness as well as a great courtesy for the, um, I'll say comfort in every way of a neighbor <laughs> during the construction, including the demolition that's been done so far. And I'd like to commend them for that. Thank you. Any other comments from other parties? I don't see any hands raised. And Carolyn, um, any comments from DPW or any other letters or emails to your office? Um, no. Um, DPW had no um, concerns. Um, they know that this will need more uh, review during planning board review. So, um, you know, just utility connection kind of thing. Right. But they, okay. for this part, for this part, um, no. Okay. I I'm I'm sorry. I'm I must be very thick here, but I'm still a little bit confused about if we give approval and then the building comes down, how is it that the approval then supersedes what otherwise would be the case of no longer having a non-conforming property? 
how, how would just our, you know, sort of bald approval well, in this hearing? One thought is in that case, would the removal of the building be part of the development pro redevelopment process in accordance with our is that findings? The, is that how to think of it? Yeah, so you're approving, you're making a determination about whether this is uh, not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood because what they're proposing is 14 feet from the rear setback instead of 10 feet, it's one foot instead of a third of a foot. And you're looking at the whole, uh, you know, the massing of it as compared to the previously previous building. Once this is approved, then sort of that sets the new nonconformity. So let's say 10 years down the road, someone comes and says, oh, I want to, you know, add on. Now this is the structure that's nonconforming. It's not the one that's torn down. Um, but, you know, if in terms of allowing flexibility, you know, your determination can be, well, they're um, 10 feet. So let me add another component to this. If, if a structure is non-conforming as to setback and the um, it's only a five foot non-conformity or maybe it's, it's, it encroaches even more than five feet, but the proposed addition or the new building doesn't encroach more than five feet into the setback, that's by right. So it doesn't even come to the zoning board. So in fact, what you're looking at here is one foot more than what would be allowed by right. So if they proposed this building to be a 15 foot setback in the rear, they wouldn't even have to come to you for um, uh, um, application. So um, in your evaluation, the reason why I bring that up is in your evaluation, if you do allow more flexibility to extend the length of that structure along that 14 feet, um, you know, that you can, sort of given the style and the massing that's proposed, um, you can probably make a determination about whether you think of that kind of structure and that encroachment is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood, particularly given that it's only one foot further than what would be allowed by right. Well, I'm seeing the logic of uh, starting an application process, which has to happen prior to the uh, building permit application um, in order to kick off the project um, because the demolition is part of the rebuilding. They have a project in process. It isn't that there's a demolition project and then a construction project. It is a project under a permit, and this is the beginning of the permitting process. Do we want to close the public hearing? Is there anyone else who wants to say anything? We have further discussion. All right, I move to close the public hearing. David's muted. I was just I was just starting to say, but I somehow muted myself that um, before we close the public hearing, could we sort of have a talk about a, a proposed motion, uh, taking into account everything that's been said so that we could still, if, if necessary, have a bit of input from the applicant. Does that make sense? So, so before we close the public hearing, what, what motion do we have in mind? Can, is, can we, Carolyn, is it procedurally, can we do this? It's 
you can take a straw poll. You can say, you know, yeah. yeah, on what emotion would be. Right. Because I, I'm, um, I think I'm a little more reluctant than uh, the, the other two on the board to veer from the plan we're looking at. I, I have a hard time getting my head around um, approving the request for the finding based on or subject to setbacks that are not in the application before us. But even, but if, could, the, even if those setbacks would be conforming? I, I'm okay if the setbacks would be conforming. So if somebody wants to articulate a, a motion for, you know, discussion before we close the public hearing, just in case we need a bit more input, because we've done that so many times where we've closed the public hearing. Oh, we, we need to know. The applicant the has his hands raised. Adam okay. Novit has his hands raised. Yeah. Please, could we hear from Mr. Novit? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, I, I was just kind of thinking about this and there's a, I'm not <laughs> sure what the total linear feet of the non-conforming setbacks are of the building at the moment, right? So you have, there's, there's a non-conforming setback of the building that runs east to west on the north boundary. Mm -hmm. And there's a non-conforming setback that runs north to south on the east boundary, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's those two total distances and then there's the non-conforming setback that's in the back, which is at its closest 10.35 feet. And the non-conforming setback on the east, which is call it two feet or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I guess what I would suggest is that we, just to keep things simple, is that we say that the setback to the back is, I don't know, call it 12.9 uh, feet or whatever you want to call it. And the setback to the east is a foot or whatever you want to call it. But that we not exceed the current non-conforming linear feet. Does that make sense to people? So that, that the current structure has a non-conforming setback on the north and a non-conforming setback on the east add those two numbers up, we do not exceed those numbers. Um, and we, and we have the, that, that's it. So what we're basically doing is saying, we're not going to make it any worse than it is. Um, it may shift a little bit on the, the sides, but, um, you know, we're not going to exceed the zoned height. We're not going to break the setbacks on the west or the south side that mm -hmm. do do people get what i'm saying here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. very helpful. I, I think to me that that just seems like this is what exists i'm i'm sorry but we we're in this kind of situation i still actually don't know what's going to happen with dep um because we still don't have our lab tests back and a bunch of other stuff uh but we know that we have the april 20th deadline um and it's all super confusing. Um, right. I'm just. Yeah, Car I, Carolyn, Carolyn, did you have a response to that? Yeah, I mean, I think, although it does sound reasonable, I would suggest though that your jurisdiction is about two different setbacks and you can't just add them together and sort of blend them, but it's really about, our, you know, what are the impacts to the rear? What are the impacts to the side? Okay. So I think you'd want to know whether or not, for example, the side setback is so much closer, you'd want to know, I would think that the length, you know, whether or not that the um, building front to back is going to shift um, greater or lesser on that one foot because it's so close to that one property line. Whereas along the the rear, you've got more space and it's also a city park. And so the impact is gonna be different. So I think you really do need to look at side setback versus rear setback differently. Right, but we can say the same concept except articulate it based on rear setback and side setback. 
Correct. Right. Right. So, um, okay. So we can look at the current plan, but then add to it that in any event, it does not exceed the current setbacks or doesn't. It, it, you don't have to say that. You have to, huh? Um, it goes without saying they can't exceed the current setbacks. No, 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 no. That, I, I meant to frame it more liberally that it could, uh, it could go beyond the, the plan that we're looking at. But it can't uh, exceed See the current. The yes. current in, yes. in uh, what's the term uh, encroachment within the. So are you talking about the that. closer point or the further point? Because it's at an angle. Probably so the closest they, point. Well, why can't we just say the current and that includes both of those pieces, recognizing there's that angle. So we could, I could propose some language. Um, so for this rear setback, um, we could say the structure cannot be any closer than three and a half feet to the Eastern property line and can extend as can extend 75 feet to the West and be no closer than 14 feet to the rear property line. And that would that would get us what we need on that rear. And this distance here, it's about, it's 21 feet to the other setback. So it would, be, it would, it would take what we're showing here, three and a half feet better than the existing. We'll take the 14 and we just need flexibility to go west another 20 feet. Which you'd have by right, wouldn't you? Yeah, we, um, Carolyn, we can't, I think we have to have a finding to extend the nonconformity. Um, which if is, you were at 50, if you made it to 15 feet, it would be by right. But with a 14 foot, a request for 14 foot setback, that's what kicks you into the zone. I'm, I'm sorry, I was talking to the West. I was referring to the West. Right, that's what I mean. If they can extended it to the West on the 14 foot nonconforming setback, line as proposed, I see. Okay. that Got requires it. zoning board. If they shifted it forward a little bit to make that 15 feet, then it would be by right. Got it. Is there an opinion of the, of the board whether or not there would be appetite for approving um, the 75 linear feet starting at three and a half feet on the east? As long as it doesn't on the north be more than 14 feet? Yep, I think yeah, I'd put that on the table to see if that's if that could be part of this motion. Well, as I think as Carolyn said, once you pass the current existing line, you can't. You're you're asking for an extension of the nonconforming of the 14 feet further west, right? Yes. Yep. I'm still struggling with the, just trying to visualize this. I mean, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. I don't think we've ever approved a, a finding when we're not looking at the, uh, the layout with the proposed setbacks that we're approving. So I, I understand you're in a narrative fashion, you're trying to explain the difference. So I guess I'll ask Carolyn, does it, from the well, standpoint of your office, Carolyn, does this concept work? <laughs> so here's a better, here's a cleaner way to approach it. You could continue this for two weeks. They could resubmit a, an amended plan showing a 75 foot length wall along a 14 foot non-conforming setback. And then they're not obliged to build on that. They can always go smaller. So you can improve sort of the maximum window and then they can decide whether or not to build that or less and that way you have it on the plan you're referring to the plan in your decision will the old building still be there in two weeks that's the question um yeah it should still be there in two weeks and is it actually two weeks carolyn aren't we we're in the last um, yeah now. sorry it's I mean, it's three weeks so it'll be april 14th cutting it a little close I think we have, um, 
I what believe you... we have approved plans where um, our conditions were such that what an applicant was going to give to the building inspector uh, would be in compliance. Um, so I'm, I'm picturing something that isn't specifically showing this exact proposed footprint of a building, but rather um, an envelope. Well, the area with when which we would be okay with these setbacks. Well, uh, Sarah, you're saying it's cutting it close, but I'd like to ask the applicant the same question. It, would the applicant be comfortable if we continue to this to the 14th? Because my first choice would be to see this revised plan as described by Carolyn and vote on that. If, if that's cutting it too close, then if everyone can get comfortable with a narrative description of what that revised plan would show, I guess I could live with it. But, it, but will the building be down by the 14th is my, is my question for the applicant because that's the date we're talking about. Um, I, 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 current, um, my current communication with the LSP who's dealing with the DEP about the oil spill seems to indicate that that's true, but we don't have actual lab results back. So there, I got, you know, I got a call from my demo guy today asking me if we were going to, if, if we could demo the building on Monday. Um, it's very, it's a very weird moving yeah, set of problems because it's not only subject to what the DEP wants, it's also subject to the availability of the demolition company. So I don't, that it's just a weird situation where I, I don't, there's two, there's, there's, there's uncertainty from two different um, angles. Yeah, no, right? I know, boy, I know how those DEP things, by the way, I think you mean LSP, not LSD. We oh, LSP, something yeah. Something completely different. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it is, it is, because you know what? It is actually that confusing. Yeah. Uh, no, but, but it does but, sound uh, like they could show up at your doorstep right, sometime right. between now and then and say, we're taking this down now. And well, that's- Well, that's I mean, I, they would have to, what would actually happen is they would yeah. show up and it, basically if the lab results come back that we have to, uh, that the spill extends far enough under the foundation so the, the problem is, is that the old storage tank was located right next to the foundation. And they kind of think that maybe they can dig underneath the foundation and get it out that way, but they don't really know. Um, so what would happen is if the lab results come back and they find that there's significant enough contamination that the foundation has to come up, then we have to knock down the building. And then that becomes a thing of like, can we, do we have a demolition company that's able to do it within the time frame that's necessary? And the guy, you know, the 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 only day might just be like Tuesday. So the question is, is do I pay All right. the DEP for the fines or right. what do I do? Right. You know. Okay. So so if Carolyn, if are are you comfortable if that from the standpoint of your office and the building inspector's office that we can describe this uh, you know, motion basically in a way with a narrative description which similar to what we've heard, I think from Mr. Lee, um, that we can do this in a responsible way without waiting until the 14th to see another plan showing a picture of what we're putting, describing in, in words. Yeah, I mean, I think you can um, say that you're approving um, the, replacement structure and the replacement structure will be no closer to the rear lot line than 14 feet and no closer to the eastern lot line than whatever that was two point or well it's one foot actually um at that front corner so does that verbiage allow the applicant to build a building that extends farther west, only 14 feet back from the rear line? Yes. Okay. But and it what does are we not allow, the, Sorry, yeah. but it does not allow them to build 
as far north as the current setback, right? Correct, because they're showing you 14 feet. Okay. And they can't get closer on the west side than what's allowed under the ordinance, right? Right. Right. But, but we have to somehow say all of that, I think. But well, no, because they wouldn't, they're not asking for that relief. Okay. And the zoning stands that it's a 10 foot side setback. Okay. When they haven't asked for it. Okay. Okay. And with respect to the northern boundaries, if we say 14 feet, but they want to come back and make it closer to what currently exists, they could do an amendment, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. And you I, live I with that, uh, Mr. Lee and Mr. Novick, Novick and Mrs. Novick? Uh, yeah, so basically what we're saying now is that, just for me to clarify this, is that we will be no closer than 14 feet to the rear property line, right? And then, um, and that we will be no closer than, I'm not exactly sure how many feet, uh, to the east property line, not to exceed this total, the total distance shown in the plan here, right? Is that correct? Well, you're not going to add anything. The, the board won't add anything about the total distance. It's just right. going to be not. That, that's speed. what we don't want to do. Okay. So basically, we're approving a setback of 14 feet in the back. And what in the east? Well, it's showing one foot. Okay. So one foot. I believe that the current building actually comes down to 0.35 feet. <laughs> I, would, so, um, I would suggest. So still that... reducing the nonconformity. It's yes. still reducing the non-conforming yep. setback. No, yeah. no closer to the eastern lot line than the existing building. Um, no, that's closer than one foot. I know. Uh, no, no closer than it is at the back corner, and no closer than one foot at any point. Aha! Uh -huh. That seems good, actually. Wherever you put that southeast corner of the building, can't be closer than a foot. Carolyn, so, does that work? Go ahead. I'd say that, that would be fine. We're, we're following the existing footprint and just pushing it back a little bit. So Sarah, put that into mm -hmm. a motion. All right. Um, Please. Hmm. Oh, first we have to close the public hearing. Oh. But first a motion to close yeah. the public hearing. Uh, okay, do we want to? I thought we were I, gonna try to I do this. Oh. I see what you're saying. Um, oh, just to keep doing the straw poll. Yeah. I think you've pretty much got all the information you need. You could probably yeah. just close it. And okay. That, that's all what right. I'm thinking. I think we're there. Okay. Motion to close public hearing. Second. And roll call, please. Sarah Northrup? Yes. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes. So now a motion. Yeah. Okay, so I move that we approve that we approve a commercial finding for the applicant to. Um, I, I lost my uh, large screen here. Where's how I make it bigger again? There we go. Um, uh, to continue with their design process, the result of which shall create no further nonconformity, maintain a 14 foot rear setback, and the east side or right hand lot line setback shall be no less than one foot at any point and no closer to the lot line than the existing non-conforming structure. I would just suggest two modifications. One, it, the structure is a commercial structure, but it's not a commercial finding. So I don't, I think we can strike the word commercial. And it's it's a finding to modify the pre-existing non-conforming side and rear setbacks, as you just said, Sarah. Okay. Finding. Proof of finding to modify the pre existing non conforming side of your existing setbacks. setbacks 
for the purpose of building a new uh, replacement structures. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Replacement just... structures. Okay. Even though they're not they're not commercial buildings. Well, the language in the original um, agenda is to modify the pre-existing non-conforming side and rear setback by demolishing the commercial structure and building two residential units. Okay, so we are modifying these setbacks by- The pre-existing non-conforming setbacks, yeah. And then they can, then they can uh, execute our modification with a structure. Yeah, but, I mean, but there was one confusing part in the last part when you said to the east, no less than one foot at any point, but in any in any event, no closer than the current non-conforming setback. But the current is less than one foot, so I think you just want to leave it at the one foot. Uh, no, at the back end, it's so so. All right, so um, oh, I see. You were trying to attach the let's... three foot. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's very good. So let's let's shift it and say no closer than the existing non-conforming structure or one foot, whichever is more. More exactly. I think that's right because you're you're thinking about the three foot in the northern part of the side on the east mm -hmm. side, right? Yeah. Okay. Thinking that. That's okay. I'd second that, I think. <laughs> All right, let's hear uh, how, uh, how it came no, through. Carolyn, do you, do you have a He's comment? Right. Uh, okay. Nope, I'm no. good. You sure? <laughs> it looked like you were <laughs> biting your tongue. No, uh, I'm good. Okay, okay. So we've had a, a motion and a second. Um, I think, Carolyn, did you get down what was said? Because it were several yes. iterations. Yes. Um, so, um, so that was a motion and a second. Do you want me to do a roll call? Yes, please. All right. Um, Sarah Northrop? Yes. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Uh, yes. So that's unanimous. We got, we got there eventually, folks. <laughs> um, so I think we do have another matter on the agenda. So I think we should go straight to it. Uh, people are waiting. Um, but can I just, can yes. I just say, um, I, I appreciate the change in the use of the property and um, sympathies with all that you have to go through <laughs> to get there. Uh, but hopefully it will, we'll get there sooner rather than later. Thank you yep. for understanding. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, so now we will go to the next, the last item on the agenda, other than minutes, perhaps finding it's a request for a finding to change one non-conforming use to another non-conforming use by joseph cox and cassandra sutter at 321 east hampton road map id 44-28 and um again same approach we'll, we will first hear from the applicants or their representative um then the board will have a chance to ask questions and then the we'll hear from any members of the public who would like to comment on this application. So if everyone could give a name and address first, please, and we'll hear from the applicant. Good evening, my name is Paul Bobrowski from Bobrowski and Vickery, representing Joseph Cox and Cassandra Sutter, the applicants. Hello. Hello. Hi. Go ahead. Okay, um, the applicants are here as well to provide more detail on what their plans hope to be. Um, I've tried to make the, make the application as brief as, and as clear as possible, tried to anticipate your concerns in this change of use. Um, so the application on page two, I, I talk about the use, which uh, they are proposing to uh, open up a tattoo studio there. Uh, they have a successful business right now in Holyoke, but uh, the building is being sold out from under them and uh, they purchased this property hoping uh, that they could establish their business in Northampton. Uh, so that's sort of the background. Um, what's there now is a barn-like structure and a single family residence. 
and that's non-conforming in the OI district. Um, and they propose to put this studio there. They will not be living on the site. Um, the changes to the structures are minimal. Um, the building inspector has already looked at the property and has uh, suggested that they put in two hand washing sinks. And there is a small error in the application at the very bottom of page two, where it says proposed internal changes. I list the two hand washing sinks, but also uh, suggested was a utility sink. So with that change um, for the internal changes. On the external changes, very little. They want to repaint the building um, and put up a sign on the front facing of the building. Um, on my supplemental materials, I've got some photographs of the site. The area is uh, sparsely populated. Um, there's a towing business, not directly across the street, but about, I'd say, 100 to 200 feet down the street on the other side. Uh, that's the closest abutter. And um, the applicants have had conversations with the abutter. I've had conversations with that abutter. Um, it's a father-son business. The father, I think, is inactive at this point. Uh, the son had no problems with uh, this change of use and discussed it with his father, who also had no problems with the change of use. I've listed some other businesses nearby. There's a cab company, a, re a Valley Recycling. They're both on the opposite side of Route 10 and uh, much further away from the property. Um, in terms of <clears throat> parking and a volume of use on the site, it's it's pretty minimal. Um, I I characterize it in the application as being less um, intense than a residence. Um, it takes about two hours to service a customer. Uh, they're proposing I th I think three maybe four customers a day. They would stay on the site for those two hours and then and then leave. Um, they're proposing hours of operation are from 10 to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Uh, in terms of parking, there are spaces on the supplemental uh, document that I gave you. There are some figures there that draw out potential parking spaces, uh, potentially four customer spaces, even though they're going to have, you know, one customer there at a time um, and two additional uh, spaces for themselves. There's ample maneuverability to safely exit that site uh, face first, rather than backing out onto Route 10. And I believe that's all I have here. I answered the special permit uh, finding requirements, but like I said before, the impact is, is pretty negligible. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions from the board? I just have one question. Um, I, so I understand there are two structures that are in your pictures and I assume the white with the that has the cheap thrills tattoo is the one that's going to be used as a studio. What's the deal with the red structure? I'd ask uh, Mr. Cox or Ms. Sutter to answer that question if they can. For a car. Whoop. It's a uh, it's there's cars in there now. Storage. Storage. Oh, oh okay. All right. Gosh. Thanks. Um, any other questions from the board? Is the image on the supplemental materials with the lettering sort of superimposed on the front of the white structure, is that the proposed signage, the large letters and sort of cursive writing, cheap thrills? Tattoo, I'm just curious. Yeah, not to scale though. Um, I mean, Joe, if you want to comment on that, if that's the actual design or not. Uh, it's just an idea. We, we, we're not really overly concerned with signage. Uh, uh, we, we know that it's a different application. So we're willing to take whatever the city will allow us to have. We'll be happy with that. And Carolyn, uh, could you confirm that um, Sign it. The signage is not really before us in in terms of evaluating how detrimental, more or less. Correct. 
the change would be. Right. Okay. It's right. just the change of use and the signage would have to be evaluated under a different application. And I let the applicant know about that. So they would file with the building department and then okay. it may or may not rise to you again under a different permit because that would be a special permit as opposed to okay. a finding right. for the right. So it's just and about the change of one non-conforming use to a new non-conforming use. Right, and have we heard anything from DPW or Carolyn, your office, has, have you heard from any other third parties? Um, we heard um, DPW has no concern about the change of use. We did, there are some letters in the file, but they're really more letters um, to the credibility of the business and the people as opposed to the use. So you guys, you know, are focusing on use, not who's, you know, using the property, um, but those are in the file. And so the, the reference to the ledge and being on septic, that really, as long as, it, as it's gonna be this use for the tattoo parlor, that's not gonna be a concern, right? Yeah, that was really more that, um, you know, it's probably, the ledge and the septic probably constrain sort of more uh, bigger uses that are in line with the allowed zoning, not so much that there's a concern that the, you, that the um, plumbing or the utility function won't work, because that is totally under health department um, and not, um, you all don't need to be concerned about that. It was more just about this site is sort of a, a small um, constrained site anyway. Um, so it might be hard to find a use that is consistent with the zoning. Okay. You know, that's just an, a, one factor to think about in terms of its modification. And there won't be a heavy, um, it won't be heavier use on the septic than a single family home, my guess is, but um, that all, is also something that Board of Health would look at, or Health Department, sorry. Okay. Uh, are there any member, any other questions from the board first? Okay, uh, are there, and is there anyone else from the public who wants to raise a hand and comment on this application? I don't see any hands raised. Okay, um, in that case, I think uh, my feeling is we could probably move to close the public hearing. Do we all agree? So moved. Yeah, second. second. And uh, roll call vote, please. Um, Sarah Northrup. Yes. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes. Now a motion on the request for the finding. Um, I move that we approve the applicant's request to convert from a non-conforming single family use to a non-conforming retail personal service use um, as the change um, will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming nature of the use. Okay, do we have a second? I second. And a roll call vote, please. Uh, Sarah Northrup? Yes. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And David Luber? Yes, that's unanimous. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And thank you all for your service. Uh, the last hearing was brutal. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> <Not> for us, <laughs> you know, I've served on many boards and committees, and I know how you feel. But I just, yeah. to, I just wanted just... to say that you're appreciated. Thank oh. you. Appreciate that. We just want to get it right. Yep. Yeah. Understood. Well, I'm glad Thank to you. see uh, this property coming to some use. Agreed. Yeah. Definitely. Good, good luck with it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, and we have minutes, right, Carolyn? We do. Yeah. Yes. Were there two that I sent you, I think? Three, there were three. three. Can we do them all together? Sure. Oh, good. I move that we accept the minutes that were sent out. I, I didn't see any issues. I don't know if anybody else did. But. I saw them all and second the motion. Um, I just wanted to ask Carolyn, there, there was never a, a appeal on Jen Pollins on Maple Street? Oh. No, okay, good. Um, no. So, uh, yes, so that was a, a motion and second. So I guess just roll call, just a vote on roll call for the uh, minutes. Uh, Sarah Northup? Yes. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And David Bloomberg? 
Yes, that's unanimous. Um, um, and before a motion to adjourn, yes. can I ask um, for any updates as to the case that we had that got appealed? Um, uh, God, I forget the name of it. The... Tell me a location. I'm sorry. Was it the one with Pat Melnick? Was that one appealed? No. Yes, that was, was appealed. That, and then Dewey the Court was appealed, but I and think Dewey Pat Melnick was more recent. Yeah. That one's still working its way through. Um, I think the, the owner of Dewey Court has decided, I think there's some sort of settlement in the works where the he will not move forward with this project at this time. Okay. Oh, but okay. but but the Pat Melnick project, that was the building lot that did not have frontage. Right. Um, and you said that one's just kind of work, nothing, nothing new to report working its way right. through. Mm -hmm. And the so one is that, that's not the river, the one down on river, whatever that street is down by oh, river bank road. Yeah. What's is going that what you're thinking that? about? That's a, um, no, that's a separate one. I know, but is what's sorry. the update on that? Oh, um, the update is that, um, I don't know the building commissioners enforcing it, it. The last I heard was going to send a letter to enforce to remove the structure. Thank you. All right, so we are here in three weeks, right? On the 14th? Um, I don't know if we have any app. Uh, yes, we do have it's one. It's continued, application. yes. Yeah. Um, so I will send out notice probably next week. Okay. All right, and, and I, I see that there's a John Hansel on this call and uh, on the hearing. Is there some issue for this gentleman? Well, no, sorry, I walked the, left the house and just left the meeting on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. That was yeah. easy. All right, I guess a motion to adjourn. Yeah. So moved. Oh, second. Uh, Elizabeth, do you want a second? It sounds like Sarah. I thought I, I you did the, okay, I'll second. <laughs> hey, then, Sarah uh, Northa? Yes. Uh, Elizabeth Silver? Yes. Who's on first? Okay. <laughs> David Bloomberg. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thanks, everybody.